Hello everyone, this is Tarek Gurban and in this session I'm going to talk to you about glomerular disease, nephrotic versus nephrotic syndrome. So let's get started. Here are my objectives. I'm going to talk briefly about the anatomy of the glomerulus, proteinuria and its types, glomerular nephritis, nephritic and nephrotic syndrome. So in the beginning I'm going to talk about glomerular filtration barrier. Now the glomerular filtration barrier is composed of three main layers. We have the endothelial layer, we have the basement membrane, uh, and then we have the epithelial layer of the abdominal capsule, which has the special cells, which are the body cells. Now let's talk about the properties of each of these layers. Now we have the endothelial layer. The, the most common properties or the most the main property of this layer is that the cell are fenestrated, which means that they contain pores 60 to 100 nanometer in size. Then we have the glomerular basement membrane which is usually negatively charged at the normal pH of the blood because of the presence of heparin sulfate glycan. The thickness of this layer is uh, 321 nanometer. Now I'm emphasizing on the size because some diseases which originate from this layer uh, will increase the thickness of uh, this layer. Now uh, we have the epithelial layer of, uh, of the Bowman capsule. Now the Bowman capsule is containing two layers, the inner and the outer one. The inner one contains the uh, a special type of cell, which is the podocytes. Now, the podocytes contain processes. These processes uh, is interdigitating each other, creating between them what we call slits. So, slits are basically gaps between the interdigitation. The uh, the most com the most uh, the component of this slits is podocin and uh, nephrin. Now, the tip of these processes is attached to, to the glomerular basement membrane. And then again, some diseases can originate from uh, this site. Now, for any molecule to pass from the blood into the tubules, it has to pass through two barriers. The, one, uh, the first one is the charge barrier, which is exerted from the uh, glomerular basement membrane. And then we have the physical barrier, or the size barrier, which is from the uh, pores and slits. So uh, less than uh, 4 nanometer, usually all, if it's negative or positive, they will pass through it. Uh, from 4 to uh, 8 nanometer, only the positive charge will pass, and larger than 8, it will not pass because of the uh, size, uh, the physical barrier. Now, let's talk about the glomerular nephritis. So it's, uh, glomerular nephritis basically is any disease that affecting the gloom. So it's cl classified according to the cause into hereditary, primary, and secondary. Uh, the most common one of those three is uh, the uh, primary one. So for the hereditary one, we have Albert and Furby syndromes. For the primary one, any disease which originates from the gloom itself. And then we have secondary. Secondary any systemic disease that affect the gloom. We have systemic lupus, diabetes mellitus, and then bacterial endocarditis. For the, glomer for the primary glomerular nephritis, uh, we have uh, three main sites that the immune deposition uh, can precipitate in it and causing the disease. Uh, we have the first one is subepithelial uh, space, which, can, which the deposition will precipitate in. Then the second site, we have the glomerular basement membrane. And the third site is subendothelial deposition. So, uh, if the patient develop glomerular nephritis, they usually present with these main categories. We have asymptomatic proteinuria, asymptomatic hematuria, then we have nephrotic and nephrotic syndrome, rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis, and then we have chronic kidney disease. Now, for the asymptomatic proteinuria, usually they are uh, they have proteinuria, but it's less than the range with the nephrotic syndrome. And for the symptomatic asymptomatic uh, hematuria. It's only shown under the microscope, so it's not gross appearing. Then we have nephrotic, nephrotic syndrome, which the main, uh, the main symptom of it, or the main complaint, is edema, uh, proteinuria. And then for the nephritic, we have hematuria, oliguria, and hypertension. For the rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis, the symptoms the same with the nephritic syndrome. But the main difference, as the name suggests here, that it is uh, rapidly progressive, so the duration is less, and usually it ends up with chronic kidney failure. And then we have the last category, which is chronic kidney disease. 
Now, let's talk a little bit about the proteinuria. Uh, before that, I want to mention that in this slide, mainly I'm going to talk about albumin and globulin. Uh, the albumin is the smallest protein in the blood. So, if we have, let's say here we have mild, uh, mild globulin injury, uh, moderate globulin injury, and here we have severe globulin injury. So, for the mild one, uh, the first protein will start to appear in urine is albumin because as I said it's small in size also because uh, usually if only there was a, the uh, size barrier the albumin will pass easily but because we have the charge barrier the albumin will not because it is negative and the basement membrane is as well negative so they will repel each other so for the first time, we will have albuminuria. In other words, we have selective proteinuria. And then for the next one, uh, the, the, let's say that the, uh, the disease or the pathology continues and moderate injury start to develop. What we will have in urine, other type of protein will start to show in urine. So we will call it non-selective proteinuria. But still, the range of it is less than 3.5 gram per day. So it is sub nephrotic range. So let's, let's say that this uh, injury developed into a severe one. But we will have, again, non-selective proteinuria. More proteins will start to show in urine. But the quantity of it is larger than or more than 3.5 gram per day. So the patient will start to develop proteinuria with the nephrotic range. Now, this is again what I have talked uh, in the previous slide, selective, non-selective, and from the non-selective, we have non sub-nephrotic range, and then we have nephrotic range. Uh, patient with uh, proteinuria usually complain of frothy urine because of high quantity of protein. So when patient develop non-selective proteinuria with the nephrotic range, usually other symptoms start to appear. Now. Proteinuria will lead to hypoproteinemia, which is low uh, protein in the blood. So what will happen is, as a compensatory me mechanism, liver will start to produce or synth synthesizing more protein into the blood, including uh, bad protein. What I mean by that is lipid protein will start to show up in the blood. We will have low-density lipoprotein, intermediate-density lipoprotein, and very low-density, as well as triglyceride. So the patient will start to develop this lipidemia. Um, other cause that the patient will start to develop this lipidemia is because decrease in the level of lipoprotein lipase. Now, this enzyme usually aids at the breakdown of lipids. So when it decreases, this lipidemia will start to show. But also, if, the, if the, uh, this lipidemia is lifted untreated, the patient will start to develop lipidemia which the presence of lipid in the urine. Now, uh, other thing you will start to develop is that because of lipid that is being filtered into the urine, uh, the proximal convoluted uh, tubule cells will start to ingest or uptake the fat from the tubules. Then we will have in the cells what we call lipoid nephrosis. Now, basically lipoid nephrosis is a vesicle filled with the uh, lipid inside the PCT cells. Now, um, if continued, these cells will be dysfunctional then shed with the urine. So, uh, after patient will start to develop proteinemia, the proteinuria, um, the liver will start to produce more protein, but still it's leaking into the urine. So, um, the hydrostatic and the oncotic pressure will be disturbed. Uh, why, why did I say the oncotic pressure as well? Because we know that the main, the main controlling factor of the oncotic pressure is the protein. So when we have loss or decrease in the protein, the oncotic pressure will decrease, then the fluid will leak out. The oncotic pressure uh, main function is to contain, to, to maintain the fluid inside the vessels. So when we have oncotic pressure decrease, the fluid will start to leak out into the interstitial space, then the patient will develop edema. Now, when the fluid will leak out, out of the vessels, hypovolemia also will develop. When hypovolemia developed, 
the, the perfusion of the blood to the kidney will decrease. So the renin angiotensin system will be activated. When it's activated, the angiotensin 2 is a very powerful uh, vasoconstrictor, so it will lead to hypertension. Also, the osmolality of the blood will increase. Uh, it will be sensed by the hypothalamus, so the antidiuretic hormone will be produced. And then we have also the aldosterone will be secreted. So all these mechanisms will aid to retain water from the kidney. But still the protein is uh, decreased in the blood. We will have more edema. Patient will become more edematous. So here again, a uh, summary of so what I have talked so far. So if the patient develops proteinuria, edema, and hyperlipidemia, this triad is what we call nephrotic syndrome. So basically, nephrotic syndrome is a condition which develops where there is significant damage to the glomeruli leading to proteinuria with a quantity of more than 3.5 gram per day. So what can cause nephrotic syndrome? We have primary cause, we have secondary cause. For the primary cause, the, the most common one in children is venereal change disease. In adult is focal, seg focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. Now, for the complication, usually uh, patient with nephrotic syndrome develops strokes, uh, MI. Why? Because antithrombin 3, which is a protein that uh, aids to prevent the clotting, is being secreted into the urine. Also, the concentration and viscosity of the blood will increase, leading to decreasing in the flow. So the blood will be static and more thrombus will be generated. Also, increasing the plasma lipid will irritate the platelet surface as well as the vessel wall. And for the platelet surface, when it's irritated, they will stick to each other and then creating thrombus. So. Other complication is that the patient usually with nephrotic syndrome develop recurrent infection. Uh, why? Because the complement system, which aids to the opsonization of the pathogens, usually also secreted into the urine. Uh, the main, the most common one is the C3, which is responsible for the opsonization of pneumococcal infection. Uh, patient will develop uh, the hyperlipidemia again because the liver is producing a very, very large amount of protein, including the uh, lipoproteins. Uh, hypertension also will develop because of renin angiotensin system activation, uh, also edema. Now for the edema, I want to mention something that it's usually starts periorbital because of loose connective tissue around the eyes, then it will develop in the dependent area. And what I mean by dependent area that if the patient is walking a lot, the uh, fluid will accumulate in the lower limb. If the patient is bedridden, the fluid will accumulate in the sacral area. And then it will be all over the body. Uh, now, uh, other, uh, other complication is the patient will develop anemia from iron deficiency. Uh, why? Because transferrin will be lost in the urine, and the transferrin is protein that's responsible for carrying iron in the blood. So when, it's, when the transferrin is lost, lost the iron as well will be lost. Uh, investigation, you'll ask for an analysis, there is segment examination, uh, protein measure, serum albumin, uh, studies for infection and immune abnormality. Again, looking for um, primary or secondary causes. We have renal ultrasound and biopsy. Now, the management of nephrotic syndrome usually symptomatic. So if you have hypertension, you will manage it. If you have edema, you will manage it, and uh, hypercoagulability state, also you will manage it. Um, the proteinuria will, will be reduced by ACE inhibitors, uh, uh, hyperlipidemia by statins, uh, anticoagulant um, if there is a hypercoagulability state, diuretic if there is edema. Also, you will treat if there is underlying cause, um, and if there is a science of chronic kidney disease or uh, failure, um, hemodialysis will be considered. Now, let's talk about the other type of nerve syndrome, which is nephritic syndrome. Now, the main difference between them is that the nephritic syndrome is inflammatory process that damage as well the uh, glomerular basement membrane. And when the glomerular basement membrane is injured, larger cells start to show up in the urine, including the RBC. 
Now, uh, uh, hematuria, you, how to differentiate if the hematuria is from upper part region or lower part? The presence of dysmorphic RBCs. For the RBCs, because it will squeeze through the three layers, which is the basement membrane, uh, epithelium, and endothelium of the glomerular filtration barrier, it will be dysmorphic. Also, the RBC cast. What do I mean by RBC cast? The red blood cell, when it's filtered through the uh, glom into the tubule, it will stuck in the tubules. And when it accumulates, when the fluid that's being filtered from the glom will wash it, and then we will have cylindrical shape, uh, we'll show under the microscope, cylindrical shape of RBCs that are dysmorphic. So this is basically what RBC cast is. Also, patients usually complain of oliguria, which is low uh, volume of the urine. Why? Because the glomer uh, GFR, glomerular filtration rate, is decreased. Why do we have decrease in glomerular filtration rate? The glom is itself is inflamed. And when it's inflamed, it's swallow and um, swelling, and the uh, afferent and afferent will face some difficulty in bringing the blood into the glom. So, uh, this will lead to, as well, uh, low blood perfusion to the kidney. So the RAS system will be activated, uh, blood pressure will increase. Azotemia will develop, and what is azotemia? Azotemia is a biochemical disturbances of the blood because of increasing in the uh, creatinine and urea. Now, uh, azotemia will develop because of decrease in the glomerular filtration rate and the uh, kidney enlargement because of the inflammatory pro process that's happening in the kidney. And then we will have proteinuria. For the proteinuria, keep in mind that it is less than the nephrotic syndrome. Why? Because the total filtration uh, of the kidney is reduced. So we will have more waste in the blood. Also other cause that will develop azotemia. Again, the causes of nephrotic syndrome, we will have primary causes we will have secondary causes. And then, uh, now, there is the, here is the uh, quick comparison between nephrotic and nephritic syndrome. Uh, the main complaint of, uh, usually patients come with is, with nephrotic is edema, and here the most common one is hematuria. Uh, patient will have a nephrotic range proteinuria, here a non-nephrotic range, below 3.5 gram per day, here, patient will develop dyslipidemia. Patient with nephritic usually uh, develop as well uh, dyslipidemia. Here, there, here um, also patient with nephritic will develop oliguria. Here uh, will be no cellular inflammatory reaction. Here will be a cellular inflammatory reaction. Both of them will have immune complex deposition. And now, this is the summary for what I have talked uh, about you in this session. I've talked about the filtration rate, protein urea, and types, normal disease, nephrotic, and nephrotic syndrome. So hope that was beneficial for you, and thank you for listening.